Scoring 10 runs per over in cricket is good, but if you don't feel properly, the other team might score 15 runs every over, which is definitely not good. Nightmare scenario, right? We don't want this to happen, so let's learn these basics so we can feel better and help our team. The basics that I'll be focusing on relates to when the ball is hit towards you or when you have to chase it in order to save a boundary or save a couple of runs. When the ball is hit towards you, there are two methods that you can use to stop the ball from passing you. You can use the defensive method, which is a long barrier, and you can also use the short barrier, which is the attacking method. For the long barrier, we normally tend to use this when the ball is hit hard towards you, and you want to ensure that you get your body behind the ball just in case there's any change in its direction due to the pitch not being smooth or having bumps. You want to ensure your body is behind the ball so if it misses your hand, it will hit into your body. So you want to make some 90 degree angles with your knees and ensure your hand blocks any gaps that is in between your legs. You just want to create a secure area where the ball can hit so that it doesn't pass you for a boundary or even for an additional run. As it regards to the short barrier, you will use this method when the ball is coming towards you at a slower pace, or if the field is good, you can definitely use it when it's coming at you at a faster pace as well. But you just wanna ensure you keep your eyes on the ball and you wanna ensure behind your hand, you have your right leg or your left leg, whichever would be the same as your dominant hand. So if you're throwing with your right hand, you wanna ensure your right leg is behind your hand just in case the ball misses. And this is normally used when you're trying to create a run out opportunity. As your skills get better, most times you'll just use this all the time. And one key note is that normally you have to have good playing surface, else it's better off just sticking with the, the long barrier. Most of the cricket that we're playing now is limited overs and saving boundaries or saving twos, saving threes does add up and help you in the long run. Whenever you're chasing the ball, if you're not able to bend to reach the ball before it reaches the boundary, it's not a crime to use your foot and stop it. That is what I do most times. Even when you don't have good knees, that might be a better option. But then again, you can do it the professional way where you try to take it up beside your leg and try to put in a good throw. On these surfaces that we are playing on, it's not watered properly, so it's not soft that you can slide as what you'll see on the TV. So I wouldn't recommend it as you might injure yourself, but we can just stick to the basics. Use your foot to stop it, put in a good throw, and that will definitely help you save some boundaries other than trying to stoop for it and uh, you miss it as you were too slow and it just runs to the boundary for some extra runs. So that is it for today's video. Short and to the point, just wanted to highlight the two main things that I wanted to talk about, the long barrier and the short barrier. That is just two of the basic things that you need in fielding. Once you have that, you're on your way to becoming a good fielder to help your team in the long run save some extra runs. So if you like the video, remember to leave a comment, leave a like, share as well, and just stay tuned to the channel for more cricket content. Stay blessed.